So today I'll try to talk about the more mundane side of FPSO, how to move people back and forth. Uh, Reflex Marine has been in oil and gas industry for over 25 years now. And uh, the um, main way how we do business is we try to take the expertise from oil and gas and combine it with the expertise from different sectors um, like design, engineering, um, marketing, and um, finance and find a solution that would help our clients improve the operations that they have in a way that is simple, uh, cost-effective, easy to use, and long-term. Uh, so that I'm supposed to do some kind of a working group today. I'm not quite sure whether I'll manage to do that, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, I presented a similar presentation in, at FPSO Congress in Singapore last year. Uh, I tried to adapt this one um, with the learnings that we had since my last um, time that, that, that I uh, spoke about the FPSOs. Uh, so I'll be speaking uh, and trying to, to offer our perspective in how FPSO business can uh, increase safety, reduce cost, um, and reduce downtime in way that they handle people and cargo transfers. Um, this is a snapshot of Reflex Marine. So we've been in the industry for over 25 years, um, supporting the logistics operation in oil and gas industry. Since then, we've diversified in other offshore sectors, and we are now present in any offshore industry that has to move people back and forth on the sea. Uh, we do our own in-house design and engineering, uh, and we do manufacturing in UK, so the manufacturing facility is in Aberdeen. Uh, we regain, we um, regain control of uh, manufacturing process. We are controlling quality and we sign off every single unit that gets through the door. Uh, we use, uh, through the design and engineering process, we use a method of testing similar to that of testing of uh, vehicles. Uh, so we use the uh, methodology uh, mathematical formulas, uh, the accelerometers, and the procedures very similar to those uh, when a car is tested. Uh, we have over 1,000 carriers operating worldwide. Uh, we do, our, our carriers are being used for over 1 million transfers every year, and we have around eight years without a lost time incident which is the best track record for any method of crew transfer offshore. This yellow thing here is what we manufacture. Uh, so that's called the frog, uh, and it's called the frog because it jumps from a vessel to a platform or from a vessel to a vessel, and it's used for transferring people safe, uh, safely. Uh, when we talk about offshore crew option, um, and when I speak to our clients, they uh, often say, oh no, we are using helicopters, or no, we, we just got the amplement. I don't think there is one way of transferring people. The same way we who work onshore never have only one way of, of getting to work. So we are trying to offer... Um, one of the ways how people can be transferred offshore without thinking of other ways of transferring people as our competition. Uh, we think about them as a complementary method of transferring people. Some methods work better in certain conditions and some don't. Some are more flexible than the others. Some are more expensive than the others. Uh, and some are more easier to use than the others. And only combining all of them 
and trying to understand which method works best for your particular op operation, not, not even for your company, but for a particular sit situation in uh, which you are transferring people, um, can help you get the best out of it. The best outcome in terms of safety and the best outcome in terms of uh, how much time and effort does, does it take to manage that and how much does it cost. Uh, Frog has developed from uh, an expertise that the founders of the company had offshore. So the founders of the company worked offshore and they were being transferred by collapsible baskets. And they tried, while they tried to maintain the, simpli the, the, the simplicity of that way of transferring people, and the cost effectiveness of that way of transferring people. They did recognize that it was not comfortable, it wasn't safe, it was very dangerous, and it didn't have a very good safety track record. So they came up with an improvement uh, of a collapsible basket and later a rigid basket. They took them and took them apart and uh, came up with something completely different. They came up with a frog. While this uh, frog on the picture is the second generation of a frog, the first one had similar features and offered similar way of uh, protecting people. Uh, you can see on the outside you have yellow buoyancies which protect uh, people who are in the capsule from uh, lateral impact. Uh, so if the uh, unit slams against the container, or a part of the vessel or a part of an installation. The people would feel the impact, but they would be protected. Uh, the other purpose of the buoyancies are floating. The unit floats if it's dropped in the water, and if it's dropped upside down, and chances for that are one in 10 billion, uh, the unit would self-right in about three seconds. And I'll show a video later which proves that. Uh, the unit can, because it's a rigid basket, can be completely lowered on a deck of a vessel or uh, an installation. Uh, it has shock absorbing feet that uh, help with the impact. So you would feel a similar impact that you would feel uh, when an airplane lands on a runway. You would feel an impact but you would be protected. Uh, finally, people inside the unit are seated and they're strapped in, in a similar way you are strapped on an airplane. Uh, so there is no risk of falling out, which was a common uh, safety risk with other types of uh, crane transfer baskets. Uh, the last um, bullet point on this slide mentions rental options. I will touch on them a bit later when I talk about cost and how this, help, how this method of transfer can help manage costs and uh, control them. Uh, within the FPSO layer, so I said that we are active in almost any offshore sector these days. Within the FPSO layer, we cover around 50% of the FPSO market. So uh, around half of the FPSOs worldwide have a frog on board. For some of them, that may be the primary method of transferring people. For some of them, it may be a secondary method. Uh, or they may use it for contingency or for medevac. Uh, but they do have it on board and they use it in the operations that they have. Um, the unit that you can see on the photograph here is our latest product, Wave. We've launched it about two years ago. Uh, this is the only carrier that we manufacture where people are standing. Uh, the reason why we decided to move away from a seating position of a passenger and allow them to stand is to uh, have a product that we can offer to companies and in regions where weather conditions are uh, benign so that the standing position isn't crucial um, for safety. People are still safe and uh, protected and also to have a price competitive product 
uh, this product was launched in the middle of oil um, uh, price crisis. Um, because of the particular way of the FPSO operations, many of those are located in the deep water, where sometimes crew transfer by vessel uh, isn't the best option or be because it uh, takes quite a long time. But once uh, the crew is in the field for interfield transfer, crane transfer uh, of both people and cargo becomes a very feasible, very cost-effective option. So how can we help and how can the frog and the wave help the operations that you are having? We can help with routine transfers, so day-to-day -day transfers of crews. Uh, we can help with contingency in extreme weather situations, in, including Arctic, uh, with high volume transfers uh, in medevac situations, uh, in any other emergency situation where there is uh, fire, lots of smoke, fog, uh, and with low vi uh, visibility situations during night or uh, thick fog. We also help uh, when we are trying to uh, discuss the transfer of operations with our clients. We engage with them in assessment of risk and with finding the best solution for the operations that they are having. Uh, we, we come back to them with suggestions of the best transfer for the, the operations that they have, regardless whether we are one of those best transfers. Uh, so it is one thing to sell a product, but it's another thing to assist a company in trying to assess the risk when transferring crew. Uh, we are providing uh, bespoke sol solutions more and more. So while Frog is an off-the-shelf product, we have more and more seed situations with different companies in different regions where the client would ask for a very bespoke uh, solution and then we would customize the frog for them. We've done it for ConocoPhillips in uh, Southeast Asia and in Norway and we've done it for other companies uh, across the globe. Uh, we offer bespoke post-sale support training and operational support uh, throughout the lifespan of the product. The lifespan of the product is the paid uh, depends on the usage, but can range anywhere from t uh, 4 to 12 years. Uh, and we support the client throughout that period. Both in replacement parts, in answering the operational questions, uh, and in finding the best ways for them to use uh, Frog when they're transferring their crew. The reason why I wanted to show this video is to show um, the ease of exit of the crew from the, from the carrier. Uh, more often than not, people were complaining when they were using different types of baskets that the, the landing of the basket on the vessel was either not completely possible if it was a collapsible basket or it was very challenging 
uh, because of the challenges with station keeping of the vessel, because of weather con conditions or the type of uh, basket. Uh, and most injuries were happening when people were exiting. Uh, with, when you're using a frog, because frog can be landed completely on a deck, and then it becomes irrelevant how much the deck is moving because the frog is on the deck completely landed, people have a much easier way to exit from the carrier. The operating envelope from, uh, of a frog range, uh, it operates safely uh, and is very stable in up to four meters of significant wave height uh, and up to four knots of wind. Uh, of course, it depends on the, on the capability of the crane master and the vessel master, the crane operator and, and the vessel master, uh, but from a technical point of view of the carrier it, itself, uh, there are no reasons why it can't op operate stably um, in, in those conditions. In most cases, uh, either the crane or the vessel would shut down before uh, frog would reach the end of the operating or the, 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 the um, um, high end of the operating envelope. Uh, it operates safely uh, and behaves very well in weather conditions from minus 40 to plus 50. So it's equally um, stable in very hot and humid weather and in very dry and cold weather. We have frogs in Sahalin. Uh, they've been operating there for years, and we have frogs in Middle East, in Saudi, and in the entire Persian Gulf. Uh, and we have more than 100 frogs in places like Southeast Asia, where the weather is very humid and very hot throughout the year. Uh, we, um, over the years, we kept ad adapting uh, by using new materials and different types of steel making sure that the corrosion uh, from acidity of the sea and the, um, the humidity was as low as it can possibly be. Uh, the, uh, every frog uh, comes with a cover, uh, and if stored properly, there are no reasons uh, for the deterioration of, of the unit. Uh, I did mention that a uh, frog has shock-absorbing feet, which enable very confident and safe landing um, on the deck. Uh, it also has a suspension system in the seat, uh, which is why the passenger would feel an impact but would feel like on an airplane when an airplane touches the runway. Uh, the recommended landing space in, for most uh, uh, products uh, is four by four meters. Again, it depends on the, cap on the capability of the crane op operator and the vessel master, uh, we have had situations where it was landed on a smaller space. And this is a testing uh, video, so it, it shows a condensed process of a testing. <laughs> So in this video you saw uh, the self-writing and the immersion, uh, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, while this is a testing in a controlled in, in environment in a port, and we don't test every single unit, I think it clearly shows uh, that this is the only uh, uh, carrier on the market which uh, floats and self-writes. Uh, in in mat matter of uh, seconds. Uh, we never had a situation where it needed to self-write. Uh, we did had, have a situation where the client uh, ended up in a situation where floating helped save the passengers. Uh, I did mention that we have different type of capacity. 
Uh, this uh, pictured on uh, the image here is the highest capacity unit we have for 10 passengers. It can hold up to two stretchers and two paramedics if it's used in a medevac mode. In order to convert it to a medevac mode, uh, the process is to lower the, the back of the seat like in a car, slide in a stretcher and lock it. So it takes a couple of minutes to convert uh, from a normal uh, crew transfer carrier to a medevac type of carrier. Uh, we have done uh, for different uh, clients different versions of a medevac. So we've done one for a person in a wheelchair and we have a concept for a medevac ambulance that we did for Singapore Navy uh, that can hold up to 12 stretchers uh, in a medevac situation. Uh, we also have a four-person um, capacity unit and six-person capacity unit. When converted to a medevac mode, they can hold uh, one stretcher and one paramedic. Again, when the unit uh, is in a medevac mode, if, it's, if it is dropped in the water, the water level would be underneath the stretcher. So the person who is in the stretcher would be uh, above the water level. Uh, it is a unique system with all the in all the carriers worldwide. Uh, any other carrier that is uh, available on the market, the unit, uh, the um, stretcher would go on the floor. So if the unit is dropped in the water, the first person who who uh, dies would be the person in the stretcher, which is the, the scenario that, that you're trying to avoid. Uh, this is wave in action, so on a, on a deck of a support vessel. Oh, sorry. Uh, and this is another video of wave uh, transferring. Ada orang yang kat tengah. Ada orang kita. Ada orang jual ini. Oh, kedirian pun. Okay, kami dah. Alat. Dah lah ya, kami dah. Ya masuk. Alat. Okay, um, I'll touch a little bit on the cost side now. Uh, I think everyone understands here how Frog operates and uh, what it can offer from the operational perspective. In terms of cost, uh, it is a long life product. Uh, depending on the usage and on the storage, it can, uh, you can use the unit anywhere from four to 12 years. Uh, with proper servicing and following the user manual in instructions, uh, that life can be extended. Uh, we often have situations where a client would come to us and say, our unit has reached the end of the lifespan as recommended in the user manual. We still think, we think that it is still uh, viable for use. Can you take a look at it and uh, recertify it? And we often do that. Uh, there are situations where we have to say no uh, if the unit hasn't been properly maintained and uh, properly stored. But those sit situations are very rare. Uh, however, we appreciate that uh, you still have to purchase the unit. Uh, with the latest oil price drop that happened a couple of years ago, we revisited 
our pricing models and we revisited the way we are selling the products and we are uh, communicating with our clients, uh, particularly from oil and gas industry. And we, uh, we also took into consideration that the, the lifespan of the project is now much shorter than it was 10 years ago. Something that used to take two or three years nowadays can take six months. Uh, and companies often don't have time to wait for long lead times uh, for a piece of kit as simple as, as a frog. Uh, so we decided to shorten the lead time necessary to, to deliver the product, uh, but we also um, reduced, tried to reduce as many costs around manufacturing as, as we possibly could to be able to offer uh, huge discounts, uh, particularly for clients who have been long-term clients and have multiple units, or for companies that need more than one unit. Uh, we still felt that we can do more. So we went back and we reassessed once again what else can we do to help the end user. Uh, and we realized that because the project time has shortened uh, over the last years, there is, for some companies, there is no need to purchase the product because they're, uh, they're contracted for a particular period of time. When that period of time ends, they're not sure what to do with it. Uh, they often scrap it or they just keep it on a, on a deck of a vessel uh, and they're not using it. Um, and while we want to make a sale as, as any other person, we realize that it's not very practical and it's not sustainable. So we came back and we were offering day rates so you can rent a frog uh, for a day rate, uh, for any short or long or medium term as you want, uh, which enables several things for an end client. It enables them to control the cost, it enables them to control from which part of budget the cost comes out, it enables them to pay in installments rather than have a one-off uh, one payment when they make the purchase, uh, so they can pay monthly, quarterly, uh, annually. It, it depends whether it's a long-term uh, rental or a short-term rental. While I don't have the example from an FPSO sector as such, uh, particularly for a long-term rental, I do have an example uh, from companies that you probably all know. Uh, so BP, uh, in collaboration with Secor Marine, um, have been opting uh, since the latest industry downturn for long-term rentals rather than for purchase of frogs. And they're using high-capacity frogs, the Frog 10, which I showed you on the picture before, which converts into medevac for two stretchers and two paramedics. They're using them in Caspian and in, uh, North, in uh, sorry, West Africa. Um, and they are using them as a primary method of uh, transferring people. While they do have employment in uh, Caspian as, as well, due to, to uh, conditions of the weather and the sea states, uh, they have had quite a lot of downtime when they were using the gangway. Uh, so they converted to frog they still use gangway uh, on benign weather days, uh, but most of the days they are using XT10 as the primary method of uh, transfer. Uh, the obvious question becomes uh, waiting on weather. So I did mention uh, what is the uh, operating envelope of a frog, but I also mentioned that some vessels and some cranes may not have such a wide op operating um, range. Uh, and they have to wait on weather be before they can operate safely. We have, uh, in collaboration with a company from Norway, uh, one other product that we are offering the market, um, and it's very suitable for um, uh, heavy sea states and uh, high wind conditions. 
Uh, it's been used in Norway for over a decade now. Uh, it's also been used in Canada, in uh, West Indies, um, and in the rest of the North Sea outside of Norway. So I'll show you one video that explains um, how this other product works. The safe and efficient transfer of cargo and personnel from offshore supply vessels is one of the major challenges facing offshore operators. In harsh weather, the challenge grows and threatens the continuity of operations. Vessels waiting on weather can significantly escalate support costs. Currently, crane operators are restricted by the use of estimated deck velocities experienced by the vessel. These estimates are generally inaccurate as they tend to over or underestimate vessel motions. Significant wave height is typically measured by a wave buoy or radar, taking no consideration to the difference in sea state between each location. This is conveyed to the crane operator for use in the safe load indicator. It does not take into account variations in vessel design or wave types and assumes velocities are the same at every point on the deck. On the other hand, the Hawk Deck Motion Monitor measures deck velocity in real time. Software then calculates the effective significant wave height for different areas of the deck. This is displayed in a colour-coded grid with safe lifting zones displayed in green. Hawk's Deck Camera offers a grid overlay clearly showing crane operators the real-time deck velocities. Access to accurate vessel motion and data provides a double benefit as it can delay weather shutdowns and allow you to start up earlier. Hawk's display of actual deck velocities at different areas of the deck allows crane operators to plan loading in the most safe and efficient way. Hawk is simple to install and retrofit to any vessel. Operators have estimated that they have achieved up to 50% reductions in vessel downtime. By the time the traditional method permits a lift, Hawk has already indicated safe lifting conditions, allowing operations to start up earlier. Hawk's real-time motion data increases the safety of operations and lowers the risks of damage to valuable equipment. This is especially important for heavy lifts and delicate cargo. Hawk allows you to shut down later, increasing the operating envelope. This reduces downtime for weather, increases efficiency and saves money. The optional personnel transfer monitoring system incorporates your crane transfer device's operational limits, increasing the safety of your crew transfers. Further benefits of the Hawk system include the deck camera, which provides clear visibility to offshore and onshore logistics teams. Real-time deck images are an invaluable aid in backload planning and optimising the use of available deck space. Hawk's real-time information on your vessel motions puts you in control of your vessel operations, increasing safety and reducing costs. I think the video was self-explanatory, but just to summarize. Uh, so Hawk is uh, a hardware and a software. The hardware is installed in the um, crane and on the vessel. Um, and the software enables those two hardwares to communicate. Uh, from the clients in the North Sea, both in the Norwegian side and the UK side, the feedback that we have had from them over the last decade 
uh, is they manage to reduce waiting on weather in up to 50%. So it depends on the situation, it depends on the type of vessel and the type of crane and the weather conditions generally. Uh, um, on average, I would say that the reduction was between 30 and 40 percent, but some clients have managed to have it up to 50 percent. Um, the display uh, that you can see on the image here the, the displays real-time data, so there is no delay. Uh, or the delay is insignificant, it's, it's a couple of seconds. Uh, it's very easy to install and it's easy to use. Uh, it's, as what I would say, idiot proof. Uh, it improves the efficiency of uh, mainly cargo transfer, when you're transferring cargo. It improves safety of the crew transfer, but since the, the operating envelope of the frog is already high enough, um, the crucial uh, point that I would like to stress here is that Hawk can help with the cargo transfer. Uh, it has very low maintenance cost because it's a software, uh, so it's as, it's as low to maintain as a, as a computer or a server. Uh, and it's indispensable in emergency situations when you are tr when, when you are dealing. Uh, with, with the hazard or when, when people or cargo are in danger. Um, I think the video explained, but uh, just in case somebody missed it. So the uh, display splits the deck of a vessel into a grid. Uh, the green ones are safe to lift or land. The yellow ones are lift or land with caution. And the red ones are not very recommended for lift or land when you are lifting cargo or people. Uh, and that's about it, what I had for today. Thank you very much for your patience. If you have any questions, let me know.